G'day everyone, we've been keying you up for this and we can't wait to share it with you. We're heading off to America. We're going on a massive road trip. I'm so excited. I've got butterflies in my stomach. I'm worried about little things. I'm gonna miss my dogs. I'm gonna miss my family and friends. But I'm, you know, do our bags get on the planes? We've got three flights. That's the goal to get from Armadale to Salt Lake City today. So we've got to get from Sydney, Armadale to Sydney. We have an overnighter in Sydney. Then we get from Sydney to San Francisco. And then we go from San Francisco to Salt Lake City. So let's go and see what happens. Come along. This is going to be awesome. All right. So the big test, got to be under 21 kilos. 20 Point five kilos. <laughs> Our journey began at the Armadale Regional Airport. It is a small airport, but it has all the usual conveniences, including a great cafeteria where we could relax with a coffee and food before our flight. We do this every day And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight Through the night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just so you might be thinking, why are we going to Salt Lake City? We go to Salt Lake City because it is the biggest airport for that part of America that we're going to. And from there, Salt Lake City, we're going to grab our car and start the drive. The flight from Armadale to Sydney is on a Qantas Dash 8. Hello. <laughs> Hi, sorry. Thank you. It takes just over one hour and the view of all the mountains and the valleys and the farms along the way is always a great sight on a clear sunny day. During the small flight they provide a small snack and some water to keep you going. Coming into Sydney on such a beautiful autumn day, we were granted clear views of downtown Sydney. And it was great to see, as I hadn't seen Sydney for a while. But after this, it wasn't long before we touched down at Sydney Airport. First flight done, landed in Sydney. We're gonna grab our bags, hop, hop over to the international side, grab a train, and then go out to our accommodation. Since we had an overnight layover in Sydney, we had to collect our luggage and go to our hotel at the international terminal. This meant we couldn't use the free transfer shuttle. And ground transportation at Sydney airport can be costly with taxi fares ranging between $30 and $50 to get between the terminals. Yes, it's a rip-off, and we've been caught once and we didn't want to do it again. However, the Sydney Metro connects the terminals, so we did decide to take the train. The signs to the subway are clear and we easily found our way without any trouble. Airport, 
Our hotel for the night was Ridges at Sydney International. The hotel itself is a short walk across the concourse once you ascend from the subway. We had a king room with a great view of the airport and tarmac. The room itself is basic but comfortable, it does the job. However, the price you pay is really for the convenience. Neither of us is an airplane enthusiast, but it was nevertheless relaxing to sit at our window and watch all the planes coming and going from both the domestic and international terminals. Okay, that's the first thing done. We made it to Sydney. Everything went smoothly. The flight was on time. It landed early. The train over here was a breeze to do. That was quite easy. It did cost $18 for two people just to go from domestic to the international. So it is a, a, an expensive thing, but it's cheaper than the taxi, which last time we did that cost us 50 bucks to go from domestic to international. So that's very easy to do. If you want to do this next time you're going international, try the train. It's very easy to do. The uninterrupted views from our own window gave a clear view of all the planes. So if you are an airplane enthusiast, this hotel is definitely for you. I enjoyed using my 500mm lens to grab some shots from the comfort of my hotel room. You can also view people and cars coming and going from the departure floor. Our overnight package included a three course meal at the hotel's a la carte restaurant. The food was great, we had a healthy entree, steak for mains, and I had a cheesecake kind of thing for the dessert. So and the wine was really nice. Good morning, it is the next day, not a bad sleep. So today we are going across the International Airport. We're flying to San Francisco. It's a 13 hour flight. So we've got iPad charged, we've got a book thrown in, we've got phone with music on it. Uh, everything's ready to go for 13 hours of flight. Let's see how that goes. Uh, and then from there, we'll go up to Salt Lake City and grab our car, so let's go. All right, here we go. Our international flight was due to depart at around 10 a.m., which meant we needed to be in the terminal by 7 a.m. to clear check-in, customs and security. We made it with ample time to spare, so we had a chance to stroll around the terminal, which felt more like a shopping mall than a terminal. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. 
All right, made it through everywhere. Breakfast on the plane, ready to go, boarded. The flight from Sydney to San Francisco takes approximately 13 and a half hours going from west to east and crosses the equator above the Pacific Ocean. How long, how long did you really need to figure it out? I got in a cab when I first got here. Take me to the old. All right, so what's it like 13 hours on a flight? It's not too bad, um, as long as you've got lots of stuff to do. So the in-flight entertainment is really good. We watched a couple of movies. Heather watched some of our favorite YouTubers. We listened to some music. We tried to get some sleep. It was pretty broken sleep. The food was really good. So how do we feel after 13 hours of flying? We feel a bit wobbly. That's the sort of feeling. It's like getting off a ride, like a, a ride at a show or a bit of seasickness just this sort of wobbly thing feel a bit tired um, but doing okay so going through customs took probably about an hour all up customs and security big long lines um, it's fairly easy to go through but we found this time it took quite a bit of time to get through so we've got a bit of a layover here we've got about an, another five or six hours or so until we fly out to Salt Lake City we were going to get a little tour and go into San Francisco, just not enough time to do it all. And then we were going to look at the museum here at the San Francisco airport, but unfortunately that's in the international area and we'd already left there and we're out in domestic, so we're not gonna go back through customs again. Um, but there are things to do in the airport if you're stuck here, the museum would be fantastic to see. The layover in San Francisco was long. It felt longer because we didn't really have a clear plan for what we wanted to do during the layover. Nevertheless, we survived and were soon on our way to Salt Lake City flying over spectacular mountains as we crossed California, Nevada and Western Utah and landed in Salt Lake City at sunset. So what do you think of that, Scott? It's, it's, tip, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit like cocoa with salt. Not nice at all. We collected the rental car and drove a short distance on the other side of the road and we got to our hotel in one piece. Alrighty, we're finally here in our hotel. We are exhausted after 48 hours of travel, including stopovers, and that one at San Francisco was long, as I said. We did survive the drive. Scott did okay. He stayed in the right lane, didn't crash into anything. We're doing all right so far. We are absolutely knackered. We're going to go grab something to eat, have a shower, get to bed. We'll see you in the next video. We're heading north into Idaho. We've got some great stuff to share with you. Don't miss it. Wind. It's freezing cold. It's a really cold wind. In the meantime, take care of your mates. But anyway, we can't, and it's freezing out here anyway. I just lost my sunnies, and it's time to head back to Idaho.